All right, so in this lesson, let's talk about creating a master set list in Ableton Live and how we can make use of a virtual MIDI driver so that we can rearrange the set list and structure and order of our song night to night without having to rebuild a set list. Now, again, I mentioned this uh, in a couple lessons in this course. I think for the majority of us, we should be rebuilding and building a set list. If we follow this process and these steps, I mean, we could do it really quickly. So it's not that big of a hassle, um, but there are scenarios where it's really helpful to have one Ableton set with all of your content. Let's say you have a repertoire of 25 songs that you could play at any time. You need access to them at any time. That's really, really beneficial to have them all in one set as opposed to building you know, your song set for six songs and then uh, just opening up a song and hoping that everything works. So in some scenarios, it's worth building a master set. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to walk through some of the application of this. So I've got the same set we've been working with, but what I want you to imagine is I want you to imagine if this entire set had 30, 40 more songs in it. At some point, you got to, you know, play to your computer strengths. If your computer is really slow, if it's dragging, uh, don't, you know, go above whatever number you find works best for you. There's no real kind of limit. It just depends on the contextualized to the computer that you're using. But let's say I have 23 songs loaded in. Uh, in fact, our advanced uh, tracks template is basically pre-mapped for at least 20 songs. So what we want to do is get all of our songs loaded into our master set list. And then as we go to build our set list um, every night, we want to start with and say, okay, uh, you know, what is song one? Um, hopefully we're typically opening with this opener and this is going to be the intro or opener for everything. Um, it, but, you know, whatever is song one, that's where we're going to start. So two approaches we could take here. One is I could actually go to, let's say this is going to become song one. For the night, I could go and either use my MIDI controller, or in this case, I'm going to use my keyboard. I'm going to do Command K, and I'm going to go back over into Ableton Live, and I could take this instead of making it um, Song Three for the night. I could say, okay, this is actually going to be Song One, okay? And so I'm going to remap that, and then what was Song One here is going to become Song Two. If that's fine. What was song three here is going to become, uh, or what was song two is going to become song three. And then what's cool, even though I didn't change the structure of my set, if I press song one here, it's going to jump to what it, I have labeled as song three. And again, in my set, I would actually not have this labeled as song three. I would have it just labeled with the song name. Uh, but then I could press song two. And that's going to jump me to um, uh, what is song one in our set. So we're over here. I can press three on my keyboard and that's going to jump me to what is song two. So it's 100% possible to do that uh, with keys on your keyboard, or you could use um, your MIDI controller to remap that. But I want to uh, uh, create uh, or set up what I think is maybe an even better approach for that. So let's say this song here is our opener and we always know what we're going to do there. Um, then we just need to figure out, okay, what are we going to go to next? So the next song we're going to go to is what we currently have loaded as song three. Now, what I would suggest is rename all of these clips to match your songs, not the order they are in the set. So instead of song four, uh, let's actually jump to whatever song four. Okay. So instead of song four over here, I would say living hope. Okay. And I would just see that this says living hope, right? It's great. I'm good to go. Then what I would do is out of my opener here, say, okay, uh, out of this song, what song are we going to go into? Living hope. All right. So then I'm going to drag this song four clip uh, from my songs track. I'm going to put this in my songs track here, and I'm going to put it the last measure of this song. So as I get to the last measure of this song, press play. One, two, three, then we jump to song four. Okay, and song four is playing. So then I could go and say, all right, let's get to the end of song four. I want to jump to uh, what is currently loaded in as song two. I don't know what the name of, or Our God is Alive. That's the song that's loaded in. So let's go to our ending here. We're going to drop that in. So again, we go here. Oh, let's actually put it, uh, let's put it here. Yeah, there we go. One, two, three, four. We jump back to song two, okay? So what's cool is we can use these clips, again, rename them to match songs. We can use these clips to navigate our set really, really easily. And this becomes even more powerful. It doesn't have to be just a transition that goes straight from one song to the next. You might be seeing that and going, yeah, but we want to stop after every song. Great, that's perfectly fine. Let's do this then. And, and uh, on top of using this song clip here, um, let's actually go and let's add a stop clip, okay? So we're going to add our stop clip up here. 
and we actually want it to stop right here. And then we're going to take song four and move this up to our pause and go to next track. Okay. And then let's go to song four because we had us jumping from something uh, out of song four. What song was that? Song two. Okay. So I'm going to move this up to our pause and go to next track. And I'm going to move our stop clip here. Okay. Uh, that's going to take us to song two. And then at the end of, um, uh, let's see, at the end of song two, do we have anything mapped? Let's see. We have stop. Okay, great. And then we're going straight to song three. So here's what we can do. Let me show you how this practically works. Let me jump back to the end of song one. Okay, we're going back. Okay, I'm not touching my computer. Okay. And we're going to jump. Oh, let's actually go back. Looks like I remapped. Uh, oh, that's what I did. I did. I remapped my uh, my stop clip here. So I have the incorrect stop clip. Let's see what note this needs to be really quickly. D1. Okay. So I updated this for my MIDI controller. So let's go in here, move this note. Uh, if you saw this in our um, uh, using MIDI controller uh, lesson earlier, then you know, <coughs> know why this happened. And you know how I am fixing it so it doesn't happen again. It looks like this one, this one's probably the correct note. Yeah. So that one's already updated. Let's just jump here to these last few and make sure we have all these updated. Then I'll show you practically how this works. Okay. So let's go back to song one. Again, the goal for me is to not touch my computer. Play. Play out. Okay. Uh, that was a bad transition because it obviously stopped abruptly. But what happened is it stopped and it selected song four. So I can then go over to my MIDI control, which I think play is still mapped, and I can press play, and that's going to play song four. Okay. So no matter how many songs I have in my set, I can easily navigate automatically. Let's jump to the end here. And we're going to go back to song two. This will be a bit of an abrupt transition again because I stopped. But you'll see we're at song two, so I'm ready to press play. Okay. Song two starts. And let's jump to the end of song two and see what we have going on here. I think this is just going to take us straight to song three. But we hit that, we go straight to song three, and then we're ready to press play. So what's cool about that is even with a master set uh, full of songs, we can go and use those MIDI clips uh, where you know your set is preset for up to 20 songs. You could add your own MIDI clips and locators and map them if you want to beyond that. But what we could do is add those 20 songs and do some work to pre-program our set so that we don't have to go through and trigger uh, with our keyboard. It's just basically preset, ready to go. So after the first song in our set, um, what do we go to next? After the second song in our set, what do we go to next? That could either be a, a instant transition where we jump over to it and it keeps playing, or it could be a transition where we stop and we jump over. And then again, all we have to do at that point is press play, which is great. So that's a great little hack uh, of how we can build a master set in Ableton Live without having to use a plugin uh, like uh, Setlist by Strange Electronic or Taz um, by Oak Tone, which again, those are all great plugins. You know, they take Max for Live, they cost money. So this is a good solution if you're um, wanting to manage a master set without having to buy anything uh, or get Max for Live.